way that I've never thought about a book about ends to be fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, 90% of all adventures begin at an end. Um, and, you know, we, I, when I, in the past at least, when it comes to ends, I kind of make it very generic and I let the players help me build the end, around, you know, the scene around the end. Definitely. So, for example, let us say uh, there are a bunch of rogues and they do a perception check. Like, hey, I want to see what, what's going around. What do I see? Who's there? And I'll just kind of improv like, okay, you see a group of hooded figures in the corner over there. You see uh, two dwarves laughing about a, a joke, a mining joke at a table over there. Uh, there are two bartenders. There are three waiters, waitresses um serving people um and then they, they, they ask me like oh, what does it look like i just again i'll just on the fly pick something up depending how how the adventure is set up and 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 what characters i'm working with same um, thing as well i had a character in one of my sessions they're a bard and they're the whole group hadn't met yet so they all just randomly came here and the bard was like is there anyone playing music and i was like well no but if you'd like there is a little stage right there and you can go ahead it's like that you let them create a little bit of the atmosphere and like there are little other details that were there because that's where the adventure was beginning but for the most part they had the ability to help me create it which works but sometimes you know people have dry spells not every yeah. everyone <laughs> wants to help you create the world they just want to play in it true um, true that's why sometimes I don't, I don't go out of my way to try to make uh, an elaborate in yeah. uh, because I feel like sometimes players just want to go out and start killing things or uh, unless they want to fight or do something in a, in a tavern or something yeah. and that, that changes things um, but, like play Baldur's Bones and if you don't know what Baldur's Bones is you should double check our Avernus <laughs> <laughs> review you know. what's great about this book is that it gives you again it gives you a, uh, well there's three parts to this book the mm -hmm. first part deals with um, these uh, ends that these writers have put together and all of them are very different from each other and it, it's, it's great because it, when I read it it gives me how should I say it gives me a different perspective about putting together an end because it, it, it gives you all these like extra bonuses you know let's you know um is this place magical of some sort um for example king's court um there's a possibility that you may have a special drink there um uh, that allow you to speak to the gods randomly it could be a lawful evil one it could be a uh chaotic good you know hopefully you'll <laughs> find the one with the right you know that'll match your 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 uh, alignment um but uh, but yeah they give you all these different ends you know that all have uh, these different one uh, sense of of, of all different things in there. Mm -hmm. Like my personal favorite one is Fizzle Nozzles Hall of Wonders, uh, which is an inn in the clouds. And um, I'm not sure how cactus travel there, but I guess they'll find a way. Yeah. Uh, or the Dungeon Master will find a way to get them there. But yeah, it's pretty much uh, this exotic inn where uh, yeah, the, uh, that the owner is this uh, gnome wizard, um, and they, they, there's all sorts of interesting, fascinating things about it. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I'm trying to get more, like, because uh, I, I think this book is actually worth getting. I, I uh, the art's fantastic, um, uh, and they, they do a good job of describing so many wonderful things. I also liked a really unique one as well, which was the uh, the Shivering Mirage, which, as you can assume, is kind of more of like an oasis desert one, and uh, just the NPCs themselves are very well built. Um, there are they give you enough little plot hooks that you can think up on the fly or, or make them a little more unique yourselves um and i know that even though we both had favorites of those there's also very simple ones there's one called the north call in which was i mean what you would expect to find in a forest like it's basically just not like a lodging that you'd find along the way from one stop to another and they're, they're again they're, they did a great job giving you enough variety that in almost any setting situation like desert yours was in the middle of the sky so that yeah. could be anywhere uh, middle of the forest that there's enough differences that you could place it just about anywhere you're going to end up dropping your characters and one of the really great parts about each inn is that they give um, specific areas one is the npcs themselves um and with the npcs you also get npcs you get plot hooks and the little details about the characters um you get drinks or food specials which uh, as described by manny like the one where you get to talk to a god uh there's another one where uh, it's very weird, but basically you drink the blood of a creature that you then get advantage of against fighting it, um, which I, I thought was interesting. And then general rumors of the area, which again helps with plot hooks, but also just helps you understand potential secrets of the area itself. Yeah. The second part of it deals with creating, uh, making your end uh, come to life, and it gives you just very interesting information, like like something I never thought about, like menu prices. Yeah. You know, like uh, different. I usually I, I make that very bare bones. Yeah. 
Uh, but it gives you, and it, it, some of them might be magical, some of them might be not. Some might give you some sort of um, uh, a boon of some sort, yeah. some may not. Uh, but it gives you, this will give the options for, 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 gives you ideas for those options. Yeah. Uh, it also talks about like, like things like security. Um, they had um, ratings, right? For, e for yeah. each one, they gave, uh, one was security. Um, I forget what the other ones are on top of my head, but you can look at it when you get it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have um, um, uh, like the type of end that you want, like uh, what's a wealthy end like compared to a poor mm -hmm. end, and how, how do you work on uh, differentiating the two? What's your um, relationship with the owner? Because yes, they had exactly. dis disposition levels, so I mean... An owner might still let you in anyways, but who not like you might get upcharged in prices and you might not know that right away. There, there's a lot of little things where like basically they give you a chance to make the NPC owner of the building a lot more and especially putting you in their head, which is mm -hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite parts is about extraordinary games so that you can like instead of I don't know, so once in a while I'll have a character come in and a, a there's some sort of gambling scenario happening yeah. and I have to like on the spot make something like, all right, whoever you you roll the twenty. I roll the twenty. Where has the highest? You know, something yeah. like that. But it has some some games in here so that you can use for your characters, which is I thought that was kind of cool to yeah. have because you never know. Yeah, and games are great in general because they are they're unique to different cultures. So they gave you, I think uh, I don't remember the exact amount, but they gave you like a variety of board games and then like basically dice rolling games which would be like again Baldur's Bones or um, I forget what they called here it's it's something fate I believe um, but uh, like and you can incorporate other things too because Giants have a game I think it's called La Ri, which was like a giant board game that if you want to take time mm -hmm. why not have a Giants board game maybe you live where there's a bunch of Goliaths or some other giant crossbreed uh, half breed people and you it's a game for that region and like you can make it more unique by going again outside you can you can homebrew, homebrew. Um, but uh, the games, you also give you cheating options, which I thought was great. They were like, so how do you want to try to cheat? <laughs> Why not? You got robes, you got bards who are tricksters. Like, there's all yeah. types of stuff like that in there. And uh, the last section is about creating your end, like how to like um, really create a backstory mm -hmm. for the NPCs there. Um, what's it like decorating it? What should you know about it in, when you put it together? Um uh, location, you know, like um, again, if you have a in in, in a in a desert region, you should know certain things. Perhaps water is the biggest commodity there, yeah. highest priced item. Like, yeah. well, sure, alcohol gets you drunk, but it doesn't really quench your thirst. Versus, yeah. <laughs> versus maybe maybe the owner puts salt in their alcohol, so they people want to buy water. Like, yeah. I mean, there's there's just so small little things that you could do. <laughs> yeah, and, and even if like um, if you have a a world, a homebrew world that's similar to maybe um, like a, a Italian backdrop or a Greek backdrop or English backdrop. It, if you ever go to the bars and inns in those places, even in modern day, they don't serve the same thing. Very, very, very unique by you comparison. Know. So one of the other parts that I really enjoyed was they gave you a list of songs. Hmm. And for me, well, not for me personally, but as a DM and as a character, I love that option of having mm -hmm. songs that then you could always, those are things that even if you don't aren't using it towards the campaign, you could give one of those to your bards. That those could be a song for a bard. Um, in one of the campaigns I play, one of my um, uh, adventuring partners is a uh, a Kenku bard. Mm -hmm. So like, it's very unique to be like you hear this song and you give this exact song cut out to. Um, to this, like in this case, a Kenku bard who mimics exact voices and exactly the song. So now they have a bunch of new words they can use individually, or they have songs. And I know that's a very mm. particular thing, but like that's where my mind went when I read that. I was like, these songs can be super useful for a variety of reasons. There, there could be hidden code in it. Like you can make songs be super useful by themselves. Yeah. So yeah, I I um I had a fun time reading this book. Yeah, I think it it's a great. great resource for dungeon masters. Um. um if you ever want a scenario like, I always think about the Prancing Pony in Lord of the Rings, where you have four halflings who've never been to a bar before. They go in, they see the scary guy in the corner yeah. with the hood, and they, they go upstairs and suddenly get attacked by ring rapes. Yeah. You know, um, uh, you know, sometimes ends could be the whole bulk of your adventure. Yeah. So it's, it's always good to be prepared. Agreed. Being prepared and getting a drink and having a good time <laughs> and hopefully not getting theft, uh, thieved. Stolen, stealed, wow. A term. One of those many terms I just said. Um, but yeah, um, it, it gives you a lot of unique unique beginnings, unique middles. And like, I've had places where the bar becomes that place that 
is HQ for characters. So yeah, that's true. It, it gives you an opportunity to make a really unique one for your characters, especially if they come back a lot. And there's always ways to add and change things. So hopefully you guys enjoy uh, getting to make your own little in. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, again, if you want to know more about where to find a product, I'll put a, a link in the description. And have a great day. Thank you.